Hi and welcome to the Studio Marco Primo. This video is part of a series of video explaining the settings in Magic Simplitude Pro X7. Most of it will apply to prior versions, X6, 5, 4, and so on. So, today we're talking about... Please, by the end of this video, click on like. If you like that kind of content, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications for new videos. And of course, if you want to help the channel, go in the description, there are some links if you want to buy a Magix uh, product and some merch. And of course, share my videos. And let's go. All right, today we're covering audio setup. So you open the software, there's no reason to open a project yet. You hit Y on your keyboard, or you go into Option and System. First thing you see is the driver that uh, the software will use to communicate with your audio interface. There's a bunch of choices. There might be many uh, different uh, sound card or audio interfaces to choose from. Um, Usually, if you have an external one or a professional internal audio interface, it does not deactivate the one included on the motherboard. Most computer comes with a sound card on the motherboard and the quality is very poor. So that's why we buy audio interfaces. So try to avoid the WDM or MME drivers. Those are specific drivers uh, from Windows, they won't cope well with tracking many uh, signal at once and the latency for uh, real-time effects will be poor as well. Um, so that is to be avoided. Usually the best uh, thing is to go with the NASIO drivers and please try the one uh, offered by the maker of your audio interface first. If everything fails and it does not work, you may try Magic's low latency, but with all the tests that I made, it is not in par with the ASIO drivers offered by uh, the maker of my card. The actual one, one that I use is for my um, RME Fireface USB and, in it, and it is a UFX model, so that's why I'm choosing this one. Audio setup, usually you do not need to change anything. If you get crackles or the software stops playing, um, then you can play with the ASIO buffer. The audio buffer is a way for the computer to gather information in advance and then make some calculation and render it to you so that the audio that you hear is stable. If you click on control panel, it will open the settings for your specific audio interface. Mine, of course, the RMA, uh, and then you can change the buffer. So how do you set the buffer size? The more your buffer is high, the more latency you will have. Latency means that if you play on a keyboard uh, and the keyboard controls a virtual instrument in your software, it will take time for it to produce sound that you will hear. So latency means that I hit a note and I don't hear it right away. There's a delay before I hear it. So the best thing to do is to go uh, the lowest as possible, you can start at 256 samples. It's barely hearable. And if you have very big projects with many, many uh, plugins that run uh, in real time, then you can go to 512 or uh, even higher. A trick to do is to record uh, with uh, real time effects at the beginning of your recording, not when you already have 30 tracks recorded. So let's say I need to record uh, an electric guitar and the customer has its own specific uh, amp sim. Um, then we will try to record this first uh, after the drums so the, the rhythm is, is nice and not after the vocals and everything else is done. We hit cancel. 
Usually you don't have to uh, change anything else here. One important thing to uh, decide is uh, the bit depth of your recording. Uh, of course, 24-bit is the standard for the recording industry. 16-bit uh, will mean that your uh, noise floor will be very high. So if you don't record your signal very hot, you may record more noise so that's why we go 24 or 32 bits um 32 bits might be good but it needs to calculate and upscale everything that it records at while it does it so it's better to go with what your audio interface gives you so mine is a 24 bit uh, so that's why i go there and here it is uh, the monitoring setup now this will very depend on your audio interface. Um, most audio interface allow you to mix the signal that comes in from uh, the microphone into some of the outputs. Um, and for an example, my RMA UFX, if I open the mixer, I have all the inputs and then those are the at the middle the returns from the software and then at the bottom the physical output of the card so if i record i will do my own mix and uh, the musician will receive maybe the master from the software so it can follow the song and um, a whole band could be recorded at once and they have all their own mix in their headphones and this is all done in real time no latency done by the interface so uh, that's a thing uh, but some audio interface don't have this feature so you need to activate some uh, monitoring redirection within Samplitude and that's why you will change this so at this point you can see the details. Peak meters only means that there's no monitoring feature activated and you only see the, the peak meters on the tracks while recording. And after that, you can do hardware recording, uh, software tracks monitoring. So that's, that means that you will hear the effect in real time while recording. And then hardware and ethics monitoring. So going to the last one will activate the VSTI, the virtual instruments, and will allow you to create some outputs that will redirect uh, to the physical output of your interface. So you can mix down what comes in and going back to the headphones, many different headphones, uh, all done by Samplitude. But of course, this takes more CPU, uh, more resources. So you need to be careful how many effects you do in real time. Um, you may experience crashes or crackle or artifacts. So the monitoring behavior uh, will allow you to decide if uh, the monitoring take in charge only those tracks that you activated the monitoring. There's a button for that. So you can record 20 tracks, but monitor only three or tape monitoring. Every tracks that are aimed to record will be monitored. So that's the difference. All right. I hope you like this one. Don't forget to click on like, subscribe and so on. And uh, stay tuned for the next videos. They will go through all the settings maybe one by one. I'm trying to uh, limit myself so the videos are not too long. So, see you for the next one.